Hi guys, you're back with Barry, and I'm going to do a video today. It's Sunday, and about three days after we return from our uh, Northwest trip, uh, Larry's going to be editing a bunch of videos, but for the longest time I've wanted to cover a topic that uh, is troublesome to me, and um, I want to cover it now. It's been far too long. Uh, on the way back, uh, Coming up now, if you're looking closely on the left side of the road, you're going to see what is an orange mess that was a car. Now, I want on straight, great highway. Most of the highways in the DR are excellent. I want you to have a good example of some of the wrecks that I've seen, that I see. I'm slowing down here. I'm going to go by. Okay. Now... How does this happen on this kind of road? How does an accident like that happen at 80 kilometer an hour maximum? Okay, that little area you just saw to the left, that's where the engine was. Uh, Leanne's going to be uploading some pictures of this, just three pictures or four. I, I wanted to cover different angles to give you the magnitude of the impact of an accident like this. I can also presume it was a truck on the other end by how it tore off the top of everything and there's nothing left so the other vehicle was like an SUV or a truck substantially taller than the car itself but <clears throat> I'm going back to asking how does that happen on this kind of road day or night I don't care you know that's what I wanted to cover there's um so many accidents that I've seen over the last 20 plus years here that um, I, I just can't explain. They just defy any sense of logic. I'm just cruising along here a little bit slower than normal. Uh, I'm doing about, uh, instead of 80, I'm doing about 70 just for a good filming. And we're talking about this. And I'm going back to that question. How does an accident of that magnitude happen unless a a mechanical something snapped and lost complete control in any event they were going at least two and a half times the amount to have that kind of impact again uh, the picture that Leanne is going to put up on the screen one of them is the gauge plate of this car I found that in the grass about 150 feet away from the body. Now, understand, that's out of the dashboard. Okay, there were pieces everywhere. So extreme speed was involved. More often than not, I'm just going to call it like it is. You see, there's a guy zooming by at about 95 miles an hour. You know, you get used to it, and there's ways of, of driving relatively safe within it. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But... Without alcohol being involved in an accident like that, how does something like that happen? And you have to understand, I've seen so many of them that coming back from the trip with Johnny, I just said, you know, that's my mark. I need to really do this video. And I'm, we're approaching Rio San Juan. I'm just going to keep on talking. But you, if you drive... According to Western rule, that is, uh, you know, honoring double yellow lines, stopping for pedestrians in the middle, you know, if someone wants to cross the street, giving right of way when it should be, not when it shouldn't, you're going to have problems. Now, that doesn't mean you can't safely drive around here. But I guess I'm going to joke around for a minute when I describe this, and I'm going to say, you've got to think of the dumbest thing the person in front or behind you can do especially if it's a motorcycle and 98 out of 100 times you're going to be correct they're stopping on the main highway instead of pulling off it there's a perfect example a baby a young child a driver and maybe a mother or grandmother four on a motorcycle and they stop right in the lane <clears throat> these are the kind of silly things you happen here but if you're prepared for them, if you're going to drive like you would in a Western culture and, oh, I had my turn signal on or it was my right of way, you're going to have problems. 
because it doesn't mean anything. See, I'm going over double yellow lines right now. There's a car parked on the main highway, just parked on the main highway instead of pulling off. It's no big deal if you're used to it. And, uh, and that's the thing. Um, there's a couple of Caribbean tour buses, you know, like how many accidents have those guys been in? Countless, you know. So it's like Caribbean, you know, Caribbean deck tours. It, it's ridiculous. This doesn't have to happen. And we need some way of stopping it. And uh, I'm really proud of Cavoli, Mayor Cavoli, Jorge, because he's been talking about speed bumps throughout the city of Cabrera, the town. And I'm going to shut this film off now. And we're going to pick it up uh, just on the top of La Catalina. Okay, I'm pulled off here at the top of uh, La Catalina. And we're going to commence down the hill. Just let a little bit of uh, traffic go. I'm going to pull out now. And uh, for those of you, I know a lot of my subscribers are already going to know this intersection. It's uh, where you turn right to go into La Catalina, the area of La Catalina and what was the La Catalina Hotel. There's a sign above. Anyway, you know shortly after that, and for those of you that don't, you'll soon see, there's a nice hill that goes down into the town of Cabrera. Now, New Year's, the week of New Year's, from New Year's to New Year's Eve, and by far the worst weekend in this uh, in this country is Easter. That is the main holiday and every Easter coming down this road you have these crotch rockets with young guys and girls on the back trying to show off for girlfriends like young people do. We've all done this but I am telling you they're coming down as of now on this flat they're starting to really pick up some momentum and it heads into another slightly steeper portion of the hill which banks to the right okay as it goes down we're going downhill now it banks to the right i passed this guy purposely to give you an idea what i'm talking about but i'll cut back in is they apex this corner from this lane into the white line on the right side of the road and then you know momentum and inertia carries them back into that left lane by now they're going about 130 and i'm pretty good at estimating speeds with somebody on the back so this is why i'm all in favor and i've been preaching this for a long time about speed bumps i only wish they were the cement ones instead of the uh, black plastic with reflector because they tend to pry those out and leave a couple of them out so motorcycles they know where they are and they can fly through them and we've got to put signs earlier coming up now you see that sign on the right okay from that sign to the first speed bump i'm coming up to now we're about 150 feet now that's fine if if you're exceeding the speed limit a little bit but if you're going 130 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone, that sign is useless. By the time you could make out that sign, you already have no chance of stopping and a good chance of washboarding on the ruts and losing it and taking out a house or going into the other side and in the bush into the fence and dying. So I would suggest that they start marking these speed bumps substantially earlier regularly since the top of the Catalina Hill. Make it known. Do not go down because these, there's the second one, uh, and these are going to come up and they are going to surprise people. Uh, here comes the third. So the second's by El Puerto. The third's coming into Cabrera. And I'm not going to continue, but on the other side as well, it exits. So when you're coming in the other way, there are three sets as well. So uh, keeping up with what's current in Cabrera, plus uh, a long overdue video that's um, on a subject that uh, should have been talked about a long time ago. And uh, hopefully we all get it together and a little common sense and save a whole bunch of lives. So for the DR Escapes YouTube channel and for Something Feels Wrong YouTube channel. This is Barry and DR saying until next time.